Thank you for inviting me to speak today. My name is Bill Easterling and I'm the Assistant Director of the Geosciences Directorate at the U.S. National Science Foundation or NSF. The National Science Foundation is an independent federal agency created in 1950 to promote the progress of science, to advance the national health, prosperity and welfare, and to secure the national defense. We fund people, infrastructure, and innovation to advance knowledge to new frontiers and increasingly to action. The Geosciences Directorate supports basic research that advances the frontiers of knowledge and drives technological innovation while improving our understanding of the many processes that affect the global environment. Geo research spans the atmospheric, earth, ocean, and polar sciences. NSF has been a global leader in basic ocean science since its establishment. Four of NSF's first 100 awards were ocean science related. And I'm thrilled to, that today's workshop is serving as a capstone for such an important conversation to explore the applications of open, freely available data from the Global Biogeochemical Argo Float Array to a whole suite of possible uses, from climate and environmental forecasting to fisheries to accelerating the blue economy. This past year, NSF announced a $53 million investment to significantly expand our global fleet of robotic floats, transforming how we observe the ocean. The Global Ocean Biogeochemistry Array, or GO-BGC Array, will ultimately contribute an additional 500 robotic floats to collect chemistry, and biology data from the surface down to a depth of more than a mile. Within GoBGC, five research institutions are working with industry partners to construct the floats as part of NSF's mid-scale research infrastructure to program. The U.S. contribution to the global network builds off the successes of previous NSF contributions most notably the Southern Ocean Carbon and Climate Observations and Modeling Project, or SOCOM. SOCOM has been a game changer for understanding the Earth's Southern Ocean, and GoBGC expands the U.S. contribution to the world's ocean. As with SOCOM, the GoBGC aim is to drive a momentous shift in our ability to observe and predict at the global scale, the effects of climate change on ocean metabolism, carbon uptake, and living marine resource management. Researchers, educators, and decision makers worldwide have free access to the collected data in near real time. In March and April of this year, GoBGC's first floats were deployed in the Western North Atlantic through a partnership with the International Global Ocean Ship-Based Hydrographic Investigation Program, or GoShip. Twelve biogeochemical floats were deployed by researchers and crew of the research vessel Thomas G. Thompson. And you can follow the expeditions and see the status of the floats on the program website, gobgc.org. The Go BGC Array NSF Award also supports an outreach program that aims to diversify the blue workforce through undergraduate, graduate, and postdoctoral programs. And it includes scientific training workshops and building curricula with educators. An inclusive STEM literate blue work workforce is prepared for the future, and that is fundamental to ocean innovation. This is particularly true when considering the acute impact of COVID-19 on the blue workforce, 
especially for graduate students and early career scientists. We recognize that technology can enable inclusion. NSF funded programs such as the Go BGC Array make data freely available, overcoming major technological barriers to the broad inclusion of diverse perspectives in the ocean sciences. If we are to truly overcome society's greatest challenges, we will need the best and the brightest from across the globe to work on these problems. At NSF, we seek to recruit, retain, and develop diverse and high-performing workforces that draw from all segments of society and values of fairness, diversity, and inclusion are used in promoting the progress of science. Programs like Go BGC, which further these goals, brings us closer to achieving the ocean research and education ecosystem's full potential. I'm thankful to the workshop organizers, to my colleagues at NASA, NOAA, and the State Department, and to the G7 Future of the Seas and Oceans Initiative for inspiring and convening the important conversations which have taken place over the last few weeks. I'm inspired by the international collaboration evident here at this workshop to promote the important role that ocean science infrastructure has on our research ecosystem, but also for other great societal benefits. I applaud the sentiment of knowledge to action that by bringing together diverse perspectives and uses, we can apply the knowledge gained through investments such as NSF's Go BGC Array to enhance implementation and that the best available science is used to make informed decisions, inspire innovation, and further drive our understanding of the geosciences. It will take continued collaborative approaches to support the research community in overcoming the coronavirus pandemic's impact and tackling our shared climate crisis. Through leveraging global partnerships in our ocean research and education enterprise, and in bridging the gap between science producers and science users, together we can embrace the frontiers of knowledge while stimulating the ocean economy. Thank you and I look forward to hearing the outcomes of this workshop. Hello, my name is Craig McLean. I'm the Assistant Administrator for Research at NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration in the United States. I think as you know, the work you're embarking upon is very important. Bringing biogeochemical argo and knowledge to action is really what the world needs right now. We're at a point of knowing our ocean well enough to realize where we should be concerned and what additional information is that we need. We're in the midst of a climate crisis. Our president has declared so for the United States and we're rallied around that to do the best we can to increase our knowledge and also provide the types of solutions that are necessary for the world to be in a better place than we are today in terms of how we're treating the ocean, to have the knowledge of how fast the ocean is changing and what we can do about it in order to develop and sustain vital economies and to preserve natural areas of the ocean. NOAA's role in this goes back 50 years the very part of NOAA that I'm responsible for, oceans and atmospheric research, was a charge given to us 50 years ago to define what the relationship between oceans and atmospheres happens to be. And in NOAA, what we did was develop atmospheric and ocean observing systems, first on ships and then in autonomous craft and devices such as Argo floats. And we're very proud today to be sponsoring about half of the world's Argo fleet and beyond. The United States writ large between satellites and multiple agency contributions is really a vital component to the world's ocean observing capacity. And as we all do, and as all we want to do, is freely exchange that information with everyone, all scientists of all nations. We're at a point now where we know that we need to do more. And by bringing BGC Argo into focus, 
we'll be able to understand more of what changes are happening to the ocean because of climate and to establish a firm baseline to measure against as we go forward in the future. As our special envoy for climate, John Kerry, has said often, if you get oceans, you get climate. If you get climate, you get oceans. The two are completely linked and will be very important for us in building this kind of future that we want. So as we move from the core Argo to the biogeochemical Argo, I have to highlight and commend, while NOAA has been holding quite a load in producing Argo and substantially uh, enabling this with 30 other partners around the globe, partner nations, we're very delighted to see our National Science Foundation coming forward with the commitment to offer up to 500 biogeochemical Argo floats. The importance of these measurements is astounding. And what we will realize from these is astounding. The best evidence of that is look what we got from the core Argo program. So between our agency, NOAA, the partnership with the National Science Foundation, with NASA, with other federal agencies, and many academics who are very important to this, including the Scripps Institute of Oceanography, Woods Hole Oceanographic, University of Washington, and our Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory, our NOAA Atlantic Oceanographic Meteorological Laboratory, all are very important components and contributors that I think many of you know. So I want to thank all of the participants for putting your heads, your hearts, and your minds into this important opportunity. And please realize this, as we sit here on the edge of the UN Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development, if we want to achieve the science we need for the future we want, we have to be looking at what is the information we need for sustainable development. I think the Biogeochemical Argo edition is key to that success, and we invite every nation, any nation, all nations, to please join in this international network of contributing to the BGC Argo and the knowledge that it will generate so we can turn it into action. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Jack Kay, Associate Director for Research from NASA's Earth Science Division, and I'm pleased to say a few words to you today on behalf of our ocean biology team, um, <clears throat> Laura Lorenzoni and Joel Scott, and in doing this, I also want to uh, acknowledge the work for many years of uh, Paula Bontempi, who was the manager of our ocean biology and biogeochemistry program before she left for University of Rhode Island. Uh, NASA utilizes the unique vantage point of space to observe our ocean and the sustained long-term climate quality observations our satellites have been able to gather of a changing planet, um, how they inform us about the health of our ocean, its ecosystems, and how they are changing. Sustained ocean observations, such as those coming from biogeochemical Argo floats, are critical for characterizing marine ecosystem shifts in a time of accelerating changes, especially in regions that are hard to access, such as the Southern Ocean. The potential of the Argo float platform has led to significant investments by NASA to include optical sensors on BGC, flo uh, BGC floats. Over the last five years, NASA has invested over $2 million in optical sensors for them. These optical measurements have become a uniquely useful validation source for a variety of space measured ocean parameters, in particular in areas where there are scarce in situ measurements. They have also helped refine existing algorithms, such as those for particular organic carbon, as well as the development of new algorithms to exploit satellite data beyond ocean color, like LIDAR. Optical data from floats are providing a third dimension to satellite measurements, extending satellite observations to the deep ocean, and enabling a more complete understanding of the ocean's biogeochemistry and ecology. These measurements have also proven extremely useful to incorporate in models used for prediction of future climate evolution and to inform development mitigation and adaptation strategies. We're pleased to contribute to this workshop as it underscores the importance of sustained, robust, accessible, and suitable measurements, both in situ and remote, to achieve a healthy environment and a more resilient society, and I'd like to thank all those who work to make this workshop happen, as well as those who support the science at NASA and through our, our partners uh, as part of their efforts. Thanks very much. I appreciate having the opportunity. Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear organizers and participants of the workshop, my name is Karen kaman Klipstein, and I'm the president of the Federal Maritime and Hydrographic Agency in Germany. I'm honored to have been invited to address the workshop participants in this closing ceremony. Let me first thank the workshop organizers and everyone who has been engaged in preparing these workshops. Germany has been committed to Argo since the inception of the program 
and has been the first country worldwide to provide sustained funding to Argo. My agency, the BSH, as the Central Maritime Agency in Germany, has been tasked since 2008 to manage Germany's contribution to the Argo program. We have been supported by the ocean science community in Germany, including leading research institutes. Argo has made outstanding contributions in the last two decades to the Global Ocean Observing Network, providing data on the physical state of the ocean and enabling outstanding science results. Argo has been truly transformational in how observational data are collected and acts as the role model for many other observing systems for its data management. The concerted effort of the global Argo community has made it possible for scientists to obtain a precise sea level budget and quantify the warming of the oceans due to climate change. At present, Argo is collecting 12,000 data profiles each month, which is 400 a day. This greatly exceeds the amount of data that can be collected from below the ocean surface by any other method. During the two decades between 1999 and 2019, Argo floats collected 2 million data profiles, which have been made available publicly and free of charge to the benefit of humanity. The high level launch of the United Nations Ocean Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development is celebrated today. This decade will provide a common framework to ensure that ocean science can fully support countries' actions to sustainably manage the oceans and more particularly to achieve the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. UN Secretary Antonio Guterres has expressed his expectation that the decade will provide impetus and a common framework for action. He urged governments and stakeholders to commit to the conservation and sustainability of the ocean throughout the world. In this spirit, BGC Argo will provide the first three-dimensional view of the oceanic ecosystem functioning through direct measurements of essential ecosystem parameters. It will thus provide a transformational change for the collection of data on the ocean health and for the sustainable use of the ocean. The important funding provided by the US National Science Foundation will make it possible to deploy 500 biogeochemical Argo profiling floats throughout the world ocean. Completion of the planned BGC Argo system, however, will require establishing collaboration with international partners, including those beyond the G7 nations. Germany is ready to be part of this process and is working at ministerial level to outline our roadmap for the new One Argo multidisciplinary strategy over the next 10 years to provide long-term sustained funding for One Argo with its mix of core, deep, and BGC floats. While Core Argo is already, uh, already has transformed our knowledge about the upper 2000 meters of the ocean, it remains true that we know more about the moon than the deep sea. The uniqueness, biodiversity, and importance of a healthy ocean for our lives and the future of our planet are unknown to many, and the new One Argo mission has set out to change this. During this exciting series of workshops in the past month, many stakeholders have already expressed their aspirations that BGC Argo will address critical societal needs in fields such as fisheries management, carbon budget verification, and environmental forecasting. Germany has made BGC Argo a priority for the implementation of the new multidisciplinary strategy and has started this year to deploy 15 full BGC floats, some carrying additional new sensors to contribute to sensor development. The deployments focus on two areas, the subpolar North Atlantic and closer to home here in Germany in the Baltic Sea. These deployments address important science questions, such as the understanding of the carbon budget in the ventilation area of the North Atlantic and nutrient budgets and eutrophication in the Baltic. A fully implemented 
BGC Argo will improve the development of national ocean policies and support improving coastal zone management and adaptation. The recent deployments in the Baltic Sea have already sparked great national interest and are particularly relevant for our obligations in the monitoring framework of HELCOM set up by the Baltic Marine Environment Protection Commission. At European level, we are working together with the Argo programs in Finland and Poland on the data management of the shelf sea. Let me close by congratulating the workshop participants in coming forward with very interesting suggestions how to transform knowledge to actions in fields such as fisheries management, carbon budget verification, and ecosystem forecasting. I'm looking forward to implementing the BGC Argo program together with all of you and with the support of FSOI to, be to the benefit of science, the oceans, and mankind. Thank you very much for your attention. Dear colleagues, as the CEO of IFREMEA, I would like to warmly thank our colleagues from NOAA and NSF and from the G7 Future of the Seas and Oceans Initiative who organized this one-month workshop on the global biogeochemical Argo fleet with the aim of linking knowledge to action. We all share the view that sustained and high-quality global ocean observations are mandatory to monitor, understand and predict the state and dynamics of the ocean and its role in the Earth climate system. Over the years, Argo has become and is now an essential and major component of the global ocean observation system. And I personally feel that Argo is really an outstanding collective and international achievement and that we all should be grateful to those who started Argo, to those who further developed it and to those who demonstrated the great scientific value of the data generated by the Argo fleet. Of course, the task is not over and there is a need to maintain this remarkable observation system and to further extend its capacities. I understand that the scope of this workshop was to keep this collective momentum and to discuss the future Argo program with a specific focus on its biogeochemical component. What about the role of France and of Ifremer? As most of you know, France has been playing an important role in the International Argo Programme since its inception in the late 90s. Indeed, France has been actively involved in the development of the float technology, the Provor and Arvor floats, especially through a partnership between Ifremer and the NKE company and through the deployment of around 60 to 80 Argo floats per year. France is also a key contributor to the Argo data management system with the Coriolis data center, and France is actively involved in the international and European coordination of the global Argo program. Today, Argo France, the French contribution to Argo, is part of the national roadmap of large-scale research infrastructures and facilities. And Argo France is implemented by IFREMER together with CNRS and CHAM. At the European level, Argo is organized as a European research infrastructure and IFREMER is sincerely proud of hosting the Euro Argo ERIC that federates all European contributions to the Argo program. The French oceanographic community is strongly involved in the ocean, climate and biogeochemistry research related to Argo and in the integration of Argo observation and data along with satellite observation and data in modeling and data assimilation systems. Mercator Océan International, which operates the Copernicus Marine Service on behalf of the European Commission, and which has become more and more European over the recent years, Mercator Océan International plays a key role in this area of data and model integration and assimilation and in, and in delivering relevant information and services to the public. Looking forward, the new phase of the Argo International Programme that includes the development of Deep Argo 
and biogeochemical argo, PGC argo, is associated with major scientific challenges of critical societal relevance. Climate change and the role of the deep ocean, the oceanic pump of CO2, ocean acidification and deoxygenation, and the evolution of marine ecosystems and living resources. Thus, extending the functionality and the capacity of Argo fleet is a strong priority for IFREMER and for the other French organizations that have been involved in this endeavor since its beginning. The recently completed NAUS project, now standing for a novel Argo Ocean Observation System, has successfully prepared these evolutions, both for the technological and scientific aspects. Regarding technological developments, the BGC Prover float is recognized as a highly performant float. And this is a stronger set for the future development of a global BGC Argo array. For the next 10 years, France aims at contributing to the BGC Global Argo Array by deploying about 15 floats per year and at continuing to play an important role in the BGC Argo data management system. Thanks to a new project funded by the French government through the Programme Investissement d'Avenir, Investment for the Future, um, the project is a so-called Argo 2030 Equipex Plus project, and thanks also to a specific plan for scientific investment by Ifremer, the so-called Piano Project, this objective is likely to be met for the next five years. We are thus looking forward, working as part of the G7 Future of the Seas and Oceans Initiative, to ensure, through a vigorous international collaboration, that a fully developed global PGC Argo array is in place by 2030. Thank you. Hi there, I'm uh, Gideon Henderson. I'm speaking to you today as the Chief Scientific Advisor for the UK Government Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs. But I'm also a research scientist by background, a research geochemist uh, with a particular interest in ocean geochemistry. Um, and I therefore uh, very much appreciate the work of the Argo programme and delighted to be speaking today, both as a policy advisor and as a research scientist. I thought a great way into my opening remarks would be um, to step aside for a minute and show you my background, which um, is the other tracks um, recorded by the Argo floats that I personally have released during a Geotraces cruise in the South Atlantic. Now, the Geotraces is a international program looking at ocean geochemistry and that really gives me an appreciation of the benefits that we um, serve to get from the biogeochemistry Argo program. Uh, it also makes me aware the the involvement I've had with the Geotraces program of the tremendous challenge that comes from trying to stitch together efforts across many nations to deliver an international science program and I particularly appreciate the efforts that all those um, on this uh, on this meeting and the many others involved in Argo have put into making the program such a success and driving forward future plans for the biogeochemistry float program. Argos, um, of course, provide us critical information about temperature uptake into the ocean, driving the global response to climate change, um, both, um, both across the planet, but also the spatial pattern of that change. When we look at that spatial pattern, we start to understand the importance, not only for climate, but for the weather system. And we also understand the complementary information that we get from Argos about that uptake of heat with the information that we get from Earth observation from satellite programs. DEFRA, as the UK department responsible for the Copernicus program, is delighted that the UK has been able to continue our association with that Copernicus program. Another example of nations coming together to deliver better scientific outcomes and better Earth observation outcomes than we'd get by working as a number of separate nation states. Now, Copernicus um, as a program is not only looking at uh, temperature, but it's looking at carbon dioxide. I sometimes uh, call the current climate change, not climate change, but carbon change, because that's, of course, what we as a society are primarily changing. And understanding the carbon cycle is of critical importance 
to um, all of us on the planet. We know that uh, uh, nearly 30% of the carbon that we emit is absorbed by the ocean through inorganic solubility pump. Uh, and the Argo biogeochemical float program will contribute to our understanding and our ability to predict that uptake through at least one of the parameters that are measured, the uh, pH parameter. Now, pH is uh, only one of the parameters on the new float program, which uh, will be uh, useful to understand ocean ecosystem response. It's critical ocean acidification, of course, but other measurements such as light penetration, nitrate and oxygen are also going to be of fundamental importance to understanding ecosystem health, ecosystem resilience, the biodiversity of the ocean and understand and predict and manage our fisheries. So there's a great deal of value that comes from the biogeochemical float program of, of Argo. I'd like to move on and say a few words about uh, the G7 appreciation of this and other ocean programs. This meeting is itself arranged under the auspices of the Future of the Seas and Ocean Initiative, a G7 initiative launched under the, uh, uh, the Japanese presidency of G7. I draw your attention to uh, communiques released uh, this year under the UK presidency, released on the 21st of May. And you can find these on the gov.uk website very readily. Uh, there is an important statement about the adoption of the G7 of a UN decade navigation plan, laying out a uh, firm commitment to the UN decade of ocean science for sustainable development. There's also a broader communique produced and agreed by climate and environment ministers, uh, which is, I think, a tremendously exciting document, really represents a bit of a step change in the appreciation of the importance of the environment from the G7 countries. It makes firm commitments towards net zero from all of those countries before 2050. And it really steps up to understanding and recognizing the dual challenges of climate and biodiversity for this planet and the need to respond. That exciting uh, environmental ministers communique also has oceans built all the way through it and represented through it, including a separate section on ocean action which talks about the, agree, the agreed uh, protection of 30% of the ocean by uh, 2030, and again reiterates the commitment to the UN decade. Uh, the UN decade itself, of course, is not just about the G7 countries, but about all of the countries around the world and about the health of the oceans across the, across the planet. Uh, the first International Ocean Decade Conference kicks off this week, recognizing and starting the conference more formally. I'm delighted that I'll be speaking at the uh, launch event today, in fact, and that we'll be able to start to realize the ambition of that decade built around the idea of the science we need for the ocean we want. The ocean, of course, is a shared resource, and if the ocean is, so should oceanography be, and so should ocean science and ocean data. And Argo is a wonderful demonstration of the not only international countries coming together, but also international use of the data and the availability of the information that we get from that data. One UK contribution to the UN decade will be through the Blue Planet Fund. This is a, a UK overseas development assistance program, a substantial program uh, including a large amount of capacity building. And I would fully expect that Argo data and the use of that data will be an important component of that capacity building. And finally, uh, just a couple of quick remarks about uh, the COP26 meeting also under UK presidency this year. And we must remember, of course, with COP that it has three really important goals to reduce emissions, to make sure we're ready, we're adapting and to um, sort out climate finance. But in each of those fundamental goals of the UNFCCC process, the oceans play an important role and we'll see oceans um, fed through the whole COP process. From a science point of view at COP, there will be a science pavilion and we're planning a science and innovation day uh, with a particular focus on um, science and innovation. And I'd like to close by pointing out what an innovative program, what an example Argo has been 
in that context. It has innovated and, and transformed the way that we observe the ocean, we understand the ocean through the traditional Argo program. And the biogeochemical float program has had to innovate to enable us to make these extremely challenging biogeochemical measurements, um, often sensors in a routine way. And it's a tremendous example of the power of innovation um, through science to deliver better understanding of the planet. So thank you to all of you involved in the programme, all of you at this meeting for your tremendous efforts through the Argo programme. It has a great support from certainly from me personally and um, from DEFRA in the UK. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. My thanks to NSF, NASA and NOAA as the organisers of this meeting on the G7 Future of the Seas and the Ocean Initiative for the invitation to speak today at the closing session of this exciting biogeochemical Argo workshop. My congratulations and thanks to the many individuals who presented during the full course of this workshop for sharing your research and your perspectives. I salute you all. My remarks today are focused on two broad themes. First, we urgently need biogeochemical observations like those provided by the BGC Argo program, both to expand the frontiers of science, but also to inform smart policy and action. Second, international cooperation is absolutely essential to tackling many of the big global problems. Global challenges require global observations. So let me start by telling you why I am so thrilled with BGC Argo. It's not only cool science, but it's also timely and so important. Although I wasn't able to see what I hear were fabulous talks during this workshop, I have seen the wonderful breadth of applications that you have identified for use of biogeochemical Argo data. And I'm confident that this emerging program the incorporation of chemical and biological sensors to Argo floats will be as transformative to our understanding of the ocean as was the original program. Now, as an ecologist, I take a systems view of the world and the ocean. Although our understanding of physical oceanography has deepened immensely because of the wealth of data we have from Argo floats, the spatial and temporal scales of our chemical and biological observations have lagged significantly, limiting our understanding of the full ocean environment as an interconnected system. This means that we have severe data and knowledge gaps that hinder our ability to understand changes in the ocean and make informed policy and management decisions, for example, decisions about climate change. Now, as you know, President Biden has made addressing climate crisis a key goal of his administration. We know that people's actions have altered the ocean dramatically, absorbing over 90% of the heat and about 30% of the carbon dioxide. The ocean is heavily impacted by climate change, ocean acidification and deoxygenation, but also by things like loss of biodiversity and other impacts. These individually and together trigger ecosystem disruption. They make the ocean more variable and less predictable. And there is no doubt that the ocean has been a victim of climate and other global changes. At the same time, scientists are telling us that the ocean can be a powerful source of solutions. For example, Ocean-based mitigation activities might be as much as 21% of the total greenhouse gas emission reductions we need to get us to the 1.5 degree target by 2050. The ocean also plays a key role in food security, job creation, poverty alleviation, and economic recovery from COVID-19. To activate, successfully deploy, and adaptively manage these potential solutions though, will require much more granular understanding of biogeochemical aspects of the ocean. This is precisely why the data to be collected through the BGC Argo Array will be key to observing, monitoring, and understanding 
and then managing many of our interrelated challenges. In other words, the BGC array is cool science, but it's also directly relevant to policy and management. It's therefore imperative that the knowledge obtained from this science and monitoring must be made widely available and actionable. These three themes that were highlighted during the workshop demonstrate nicely how global biogeochemical observations will help achieve knowledge to action. The first theme was fisheries and fishery management. If we fish and farm seafood sustainably, and if we work to achieve healthy ocean ecosystems, we can produce significantly more nutritious seafood. Robust information at the right scale is needed. In week two of this workshop, we heard talks on how BGC Argo data can inform fishery science and fishery management, such as understanding bottom-up processes on fisheries, on fisheries recruitment, advancing tropical tuna, fishery science, and forecasting fish habitat. This information should inform decision-making on ecosystem-based management of, and fisheries so that we can have abundant food resources as well as healthy ocean ecosystems. Theme two was carbon budget verification. In week three, some of you shared the opportunities to use BGC Argo data to verify the carbon budget and learn more about the role of the ocean in sequestering atmospheric carbon dioxide. Protection and restoration of blue carbon ecosystems is one important ocean-based solution to both climate change and biodiversity loss. But conversations on blue carbon are typically dominated by nearshore and coastal environments such as wetlands and estuaries. Carbon sequestration in the open ocean is less well understood as a climate solution in part because we lack sufficient understanding of rates and the roles of key players in those systems. Better understanding of carbon cycles at different scales can help inform what offshore and high seas areas might be prioritized for protection of carbon sequestration as an ocean service. And continuing this theme, Existing stores of carbon on the seafloor that have accumulated for thousands to millions of years are more extensive than previously appreciated. So better protecting those stores might be an additional attractive tool in the climate solution toolbox. Theme three was biogeochemical modeling, data simulation, and forecasting. During this last week, presenters shared opportunities to use BGC Argo data to validate and improve ocean models at various spatial and temporal scales. Improved ability to predict the ocean is imperative to enhancing our ability to manage it for the future. There's no doubt that more surprises are in store and that the ocean will continue to be dynamic, but better understanding of nonlinear dynamics in particular can help us expect and prepare for surprises and uncertainties. Turning now to international cooperation, an overarching message that comes through loudly and clearly across each of the workshop themes is the importance of international cooperation. When considering my remarks today, I thought back to the beginning of the Argo program. And I recall that it initially sounded far-fetched, even impossible. It was so far beyond what had ever been done before. Fast forward to today, the Argo program has been such a tremendous success that we almost take for granted that we can observe temperature and salinity across most of the ocean at fine spatial and temporal scales. To borrow from the language of Silicon Valley, the Argo program has been a disruptive innovation for ocean science. But Argo's success has been due to more than just new technology. Technology without people deploying it smartly cannot change the world. The secret sauce of Argo has been collaboration, collaboration across teams, across countries, across networks. 
This includes the international community that funds the Argo network, the network of ships and crew that deploy Argo floats across the global ocean, and the scientists who use the data to glean new insights about the physical dynamics of the ocean. Empowered and emboldened by these successes, but now also faced with daunting global challenges, the ocean community now has a unique opportunity to make a quantum leap in science and in relevance. You can seize this moment to strengthen partnerships and coordination on ocean science that will bring immense benefit. One vehicle for, pardon the pun, seizing the day will be the UN Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development. Serendipitously, the high-level launch event for the Ocean Decade was also today, and I had the opportunity to provide remarks at that event. I shared a vision for the decade as an all-hands-on-deck approach that will include partnerships, cooperation, and compromise across governments, industry, NGOs, and everyone. A few weeks ago, the G7 climate and environment ministers met and issued a communique. The ocean features heavily in this statement, recognizing one, the critical role of the ocean and seas in biodiversity and in regulating the Earth's climate, two, the crucial role of nature-based solutions in delivering significant multiple benefits for climate mitigation and adaptation, biodiversity and people. And three, committing GC nations support for the ocean decade and its goals of a clean, healthy and resilient, productive, safe, predicted and accessible ocean. This G7 communique emphasized the value of robust and continuous scientific observation and cooperation to ensure a sustainable ocean for all and to support the science-based implementation of various international commitments. The Argo program and now BGC Argo are models for exactly the type of international cooperation we hope to see through the UN decade. The ocean decade is of course larger and bigger than the G7 nations. And we hope that many nations will similarly collaborate on global ocean biogeochemical observations. What we can do together as a team of nations is far greater than what any nation could do alone. So in closing, you are at the forefront of this very special moment. This is the launch of a new era of sensing the ocean. And with the decade underway, a bold new era in international collaboration on ocean science. The United States looks forward to the ongoing collaboration in that deployment of the BGC array and to learning everything we can about the global ocean, its physics, its chemistry, its biology, carbon transport, all in service to people. The ocean is full of secrets. It's full of discoveries waiting to be made. It's full of wonder and beauty, mystery and majesty. Pushing the boundaries of knowledge, uncovering new patterns, new processes, only deepens that majesty, that awe. It never gets old. But in addition to satisfying our curiosity, and deepening our understanding, our collective understanding, our discoveries, our measurements, our programs like the BGC Argo also help us understand and heal our world. With knowledge comes solutions and solutions are sorely needed today. So in addition to making these discoveries, I invite those of you who are so inclined to also share the excitement of exploration with non-scientists, but especially with young people, and heed the need to convert knowledge to awareness 
and action. Science is about hope, about creating a better world. This world, this ocean need us and our knowledge more than ever before. Despite the challenges, we know now that the ocean is not too big to fail. And we know that it's not too big to fix, but it is too big and too central for us to ignore. By collaborating wholeheartedly at an international scale, we are paying the ocean the attention it needs to usher in a new era of the ocean as a provider of solutions to the challenges of today. Let's seize the day. <laughs>